So this is the Rocket Torch, and I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up, and we're gonna talk about it. The Torch is Rocket's new USB microphone focused on good quality audio that is very easy and intuitive to use. And I'd imagine that for most average users, all you're gonna really want is a decent quality microphone that has decent sound quality, and that doesn't break the bank. And at 99 US dollars, this definitely fits the bill. That is, if there weren't actually microphones out there that were cheaper and sound better which there definitely are. So why even consider the torch then? Well, I'd have to say the torch has a little bit of spunk, spunk that the other microphones don't have, even the microphones in its own price bracket. So to be clear right off the bat, the audio quality of this microphone is decent. It's not great, it's okay. And for $100, it's okay for that price bracket as well. But like I said, there are microphones out there that are a little bit better. This does feel a little bit thin as you guys can probably hear right now. And overall fullness does feel a little bit lackluster as well. And I would say for most people who are actually gonna be shopping for this microphone, it will probably be serviceable for you guys, especially if you dive into EQ. Now what that does mean is that you will likely have to dive into some EQ plugins for OBS as the Neon software is currently useless besides turning the RGB on and off for this device. But I do have my suspicions that they will bring more features to the Neon software as time goes on because Neon software is currently still in the beta. Now the EQ options, all these kind of extra features are available from its competitors, the Razer Siren V2X, as well as the Wave 1 from Elgato. So they have that kind of stuff built into the software. And I think today, in 2021, that's something that you kind of need for a USB microphone. It really helps take the USB microphone from you know down here to push it up here to make it a really viable option for people who want to stream or do a podcast or even shoot YouTube videos like this right here. So the lack of having those features is really kind of a bummer here. Now, I really do think that they will probably end up getting those features down the line because the Sin Pro Air has them right now. And there's a lot of features on that that weren't originally with the Sin Pro Air when I first downloaded the Neon software many, many moons ago. But I will say the Neon software has prevented me from doing a review of the Sin Pro Air because it just doesn't feel complete without having a good package of software with it. Now, other than that, this microphone does lack a bit of plosive protection, which I've noticed, even though it does have a built in pop filter, and it also does lack rear noise rejection. Although it does sound quite a bit better than a lot of the microphones I've tested to date. And I think it's important here to note that you can improve the plosive protection if you decide you want to get an external pop filter. Although, you know, they don't always look the best, but they will help. Or if you just kind of like move the microphone off to the side of your mouth when you're talking into it, this way you don't, you know, spit into the microphone or do the plosives into the microphone that would cause the actual issues overall. Now throughout this entire video so far, I have been using this microphone on the cardioid pickup pattern, but there's also two more pickup patterns. So I want to give you guys an idea of how they sound as well. So let's switch on over to the stereo mode. So we're currently on stereo mode. This is what it sounds like on the stereo mode. You can tell if it's different, you can determine what, whether you like it or not and so forth. But this is all I'm basically going to do for the stereo mode. I'm not gonna go super in depth. We're gonna switch on over to the whisper mode now. So now we're on the whisper mode and I'm whispering right now and you're probably hearing me almost as much as I was when I was talking in the normal cardioid mode. So it's really up to you whether or not you like the whisper mode. It's kind of gimmicky to me. I don't really know who will be using it, but maybe for ASMR people will enjoy it. I don't know. Let's switch it back to cardioid. Now I mentioned Spunk earlier and this all starts with its design and this is the reason why it's unique and potentially worth a purchase. Mike itself has a mostly metal build with an RGB rocket logo on the front that changes colors depending on what mode you're in. There are also color matching bars on the side of the microphone to give you a good idea of where the gain slider is and the color will also shift red when the microphone has been muted. At the very top there's going to be a sensor for the contactless mute feature which can be activated by just waving your hand over it like this. And now we are unmuted and you guys can hear me again, but that's how the quick mute feature works with this microphone. And other than that, on the actual microphone, you also have a 3 8 inch thread on the bottom, as well as a proprietary USB-C port on the back to power it. As for the base, well, unfortunately, the build quality here is kind of a miss for me. For starters, it's mostly made of plastic, and while this alone doesn't warrant concern for me, the feel of the slider that controls the gain definitely does. It's loose, it's weak, and sliding it just feels absolutely awful. And to be honest, I actually don't mind having a slider here for the gain. I just wish it was a little bit more robust and maybe even have a locking feature as well. But I do think the easier path for Rocket would have probably been just to use another knob like they did for the pickup pattern and the volume controls, since they feel great overall and would have worked wonderfully 
monitors for the gain too. Now we also have a set of LED indicators at the front of the base to let us know whether or not the microphone is live, which I think is pretty cool. And then at the back of the base, we have a variety of back IO. Here we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for zero latency monitoring, two USB-C ports for connectivity to your PC and the microphone itself, a sensitivity toggle for the contactless quick mute feature I showed you earlier. And lastly, a small button to control the brightness of the microphone's lighting. The only side note I have here about the back IO is that it's very, very cramped. I can almost guarantee there will be some 3.5 millimeter cables that will be very hard, if not impossible to use with this base. And so the spunk here is really the uniqueness of this microphone, the contactless quick mute, the mixer style base that we have, even the integrated pop filter, all unique features that a lot of microphones don't have, especially at this price point. And I know after listening to this review, it sounds like I've been pretty hard on this microphone and I have, but my personal opinion is that the microphone is not a bad microphone, a bad option at that $99 price point. It's not perfect, but it's certainly not a bad option. And if I'm being straight with you guys, I think a lot of that has to do with the Neon software not being up to snuff. If the Neon software was nice and polished, I think this would be a lot better microphone. It feels like Rocket was very ambitious with the price point and the features they were trying to shove into this microphone. And I think because of that, we lost a little bit of audio quality as well as their typical nice, robust build quality. Whether or not those sacrifices are really worth it with microphones like the Razer V2X, as well as the Wave 1 available, that's completely up to you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.